Hello viewers and welcome to this edition of Close Up the Program. I'm your host for today, Slashi Dabe. In this edition as well, we bring you two items. A change in one's life and his or her success is also translated to a communal benefit. Our first item is on organized women would carry us how they are trying successfully to change their lives for the better. Hailu Midaksa has this report on this grand endeavor. Stay with the program. Women do more than their share of work in many spheres of daily life throughout Ethiopia. They are responsible to maintain households, fetch water, cook meals, wash clothes and much more. But the most risky and exhausting business for them are collecting firewood from a forest. Collecting firewood is a common norm for many women to make a living both in the capital Addis Ababa and other urban areas of Ethiopia. These women depart from their home early in the morning when the darkness is still there to collect and deliver the firewood to their customers on time. A number of women are also get involved into firewood collection for their own energy consumption. They are doing so at the expense of exposing their life for various health-related problems. Whenever they walk long distance carrying firewood at their back, they might face pain at their backbone. As a result of this problem, their lifespan might be shortening at an alarming rate. Therefore, firewood collection is causing health problems to these women who are engaged in it. While collecting firewood from the forest, women might face several risks of violent attack. Among these risks, rape and robbery are the major one. In the long run, firewood collection causes environmental degradation, which in turn put unforeseen consequences on human life. Of course, a number of actions have been underway to avert the intensity of environmental degradation and forest devastation. This is a program that narrates the success story of former firewood collecting women and the long way they went to be development heroes. These women are the members of Gurara Women's Integrated Development and Trade Association. Collecting firewood and spinning had been the way of managing their life for most of them. Low-income women are also a member of the association. Eight years ago, 400 members established the Gurara Women's Integrated Development and Trade Association with the objective of diversifying their livelihood. Bioeconomy Africa, a non-governmental organization, helped these women to establish their own association and to get rid of the tedious firewood collection. In fact, it is not the only ultimate objective of setting up their organization. Bioeconomy Africa is offering them with various supporters to establish integrated urban farming which enables them to change their life. The logic behind is, whenever these women are economically self-sufficient, they would start thinking about their environment and be familiar with how to protect it. Educating women, enhancing their capacity and keeping their health as well as creating an enabling environment for them mean obviously changing the life of their community in particular and bringing social transformation in the country as a whole. Because of this, we should give special attention to women who are vulnerable as a result of poverty. To change the life of Gurara Women Association, we have been exerting much effort in collaboration with local administrations. 
We also have formulated integrated development project to keep the health of these women and to help them change their living standards by themselves. Of course, their life is changing now. The ECA subsidy administration and the Bioeconomy Africa have been working hand in hand to strengthen the Gurara Women's Integrated Development and Trade Association. To improve the living standards of these women, the share of Kabale administrations in Yekka subsidy have also immense contributions. There are three core work processes in our day-to-day -day activities. This work process includes modern trade, formation of association, and urban farming. Among these three core work processes, we are actively working on the formation of unions and urban farming. The Gorara Integrated Development and Trade Association is mainly working on the urban farming and the cafeteria services. These women were extremely poor before establishing this association. In collaboration with the Yeka Subsidy Administration, we offered them a plot of land where they can freely work on. As an association, the Gurara women are looking for fun to accomplish their work independently. Thanks to the integrated efforts of the stakeholders, members of the association are becoming profitable, engaging themselves in different sectors. To mention, they are engaged in gardening vegetable, honey apiary, cafeteria and shower services. The Gurara woman says their former experience as a firewood collector had helped them to respect every working hour, to be punctual in their work, and to work day and night with maximum effort. Mulu Bakala is an active member of the Gurara Women's Integrated Development and Trade Association. She narrates her success story. <laughs> I leave my home early in the morning to collect firewood from a place called Dode and turn back at late afternoon. Then after, I go to market to sell the firewood that was collected after lots of ups and downs. I feed my family with the money from the sale of this firewood. But after the establishment of this association, we're working in line with its objective to change the life of our family. I'm working in this association, Cafeteria, by producing edge and baking in Jara. Some years back, the Gurara women had never imagined to reach the peak of their today's success. Their commitment to work hard in the area of vegetable development, honey, apiary, and other sectors has enhanced their way to success. The Gura Women's Integrated Development and Trade Association was established in 2003 with 400 members, but it started operation one year later in 2004. During that time, the main objective was to create job opportunity for its members. The Yeka City and Kabele administrations have helped us by offering a plot of farmland. It is better to produce vegetables than buying it from a market. Baletu Gazao is another active member of Gurara Integrated Development and Trade Association. Her task in the association is producing tej, a traditional hard drink in Ethiopia. Honey, an important raw material to produce tej, is cultivated by Gurara women themselves in the surrounding area. This helps them to minimize their expenditure for production of touch. But let us has something to tell on that. The output is very good. Now it is almost one year and six months since bees have been entered into beehive. We have made honey a priori three times a year. With a single honey apiary, we have generated 1,600 per, and we are producing edge with this honey for our business consumption. The Gurara Women Association has a very ambitious plan to widen the horizon of their work, especially in the area of animal fattening. Based on the training they acquired from Bioeconomy Africa, 
Now the women have begun to diversify their business. Bioeconomy Africa is still with them to build their capacity through training and to offer them with all necessary supporters. Director of Bioeconomy Africa, Yeha Institute, Dr. Getacho Tukuhu, pledged for similar training to be continued in the future so as to change the life of these women and protect the environment. Uh, in the future, we are planning to offer capacity development training for 500 people. Changing the life of women is believed as changing the entire life of the community. For sure, changing the living standard of Gurara women helps to see the bright future of their family in particular and the community they belong in general. A better life of these women means a better environment for their children.